We're going to talk about the Adverse Childhood Experience Study, and I know a lot of you know a lot about that. Am I correct about that? How many people know all they ever want to know about adverse childhood experiences? Well, how about, how about people uh, who know what the study is and know how it works? OK, good. OK, I'm not going to perseverate on it, so you're, you're in good hands. Um, but there are some points I want to make about it. And, and the other thing I want to say about it is that um, the Adverse Childhood Experience Study is the basis of so very much that we do. And by we, I'm, I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist, but believe me, anybody who's in mental health in any form or fashion, whether you're doing therapy or whether you're doing medication or whether you're seeing kids or adults, that's what you're seeing largely is the effects of trauma. Um, I believe that's true about who you're seeing, um, and I know it's true in child psychiatry. And so unfortunately, you know, we, we go to medical school and we're trained to look things like look for things like schizophrenia and, and bipolar disorder and head injuries and developmental delays and that kind of stuff, and that's not what we see. What we see is largely trauma, partly because we're in New Mexico and partly because I, I work with uh, child protective services and juvenile justice. But believe me, I've, you know, I've been over and worked uh, at the, the major university hospital. That's what they're treating as well. So the, the point I'm making is this is, this is pervasive, and it is the, it's bedrock for really what we're doing. Um, the Adverse Childhood Experience Study, for people who don't know, was done in 1995. It involved a huge number, 17,000 adults in two different waves. And this was done by CDC, by the Center for uh, Disease Control, and by Kaiser Permanente. And what they took was the 17,000 people who came in for uh, physical exams and were just getting routine medical care. And it tells you something about these people um, because, uh, you know, if it was 1995, you had health insurance, so you're upper middle class by, almost by definition. Uh, no, that's not completely true, but it does mean that you're taking care of yourself. Uh, and this was not a, a deprived uh, or depraved, uh, and it wasn't even a Medicaid population. So they took these adults and they did this questionnaire about early childhood experiences in various people who had various kinds of disorders. And what they found when they did that, like changed things forever, really. Um, they found that 28% of people like us had been physically abused, 21% had been sexually abused, 27% had been exposed to drug or alcohol. The point being, it is much broader than we ever talk about. And those 10, the 10 adverse experiences that they ended up deciding and correlating with later kinds of, uh, later kinds of outcomes were, were these, basically. And I won't go into them in depth, but I want to point out some things about these. Emotional abuse, physical threats or abuse, uh, physical neglect. Um, instead of just reading them, what, I'm gonna, what I want to pull these under the one heading is in saying that all of these are in some sense relational. If you look at these long enough, you realize that every one of these adverse experiences has to do with some sort of threat or impediment uh, to the integrity uh, or the safety or the consistency of the primary caretaker uh, and the child or the family and the child. This is, this is the continuing factor in all of these. And these range from things as common as uh, parents separated or divorced uh, all the way to physical abuse, sexual molestation. So it's a wide range, all of them having that single thing in common that it somehow impairs the primary caretaker, or the caretaking, the primary caretaking. And so when they looked at these, I'm going quickly through these first slides, because a lot of you know what this is. When they looked at the outcome of these things, they found that if you had more than four of these adverse experiences, which later became ACEs, is what everybody knows them as, um, if you had four or more of those, um, it, was, it was related to significantly, almost like shockingly, higher rates of physical disease. Things like um, COPD, chronic pulmonary obstructive disease, hepatitis, heart disease, diabetes. Uh, and if you had six or more, it was tied to maybe a 20 year shorter lifespan. Um, you know, not everyone who had six or more had that lifespan, uh, but 
statistically, that's the way it came out. If you notice, a lot of these diseases are lifestyle diseases too. Like hepatitis doesn't just happen. It's either, you know, it's either drinking, it's drugs, or it's alcohol um, is, is really what it is. And that's the other thing they found is that greater than four of these adverse experiences resulted in things like much higher depression, um, much higher delinquency, which we'll talk about in a minute, substance abuse, domestic violence, and, and greater chances of suicide. Um, all of this was so surprising. You know, they did not do this study intending to prove that. And I remember uh, um, this was done by Robert and, and, uh, and uh, is it Joseph Felitti? Vincent, Vincent Lee. He's probably here today. Please tell me he's not. Okay, good. That's good. Oh, he was? <laughs> I think I did know that. So, and what, what Robert Andes said was this changes everything. And it did change everything, except it didn't change anything because we really didn't know what to do about it. Like, what are you going to do? Stop adverse experiences? Yes, we'd want to. Um, but it's a difficult thing to control. So it didn't lead to a lot of immediate changes. We really didn't know even what to do with it. So is corporal punishment itself, spanking. I don't like to use spanking because it sort of, it sounds more trivial, um, but that's what it is. And also if you Google it at work, you know, IT comes and reprimands you. So, so you know, it's like, you, I just don't use the word spanking. Um, and, and so I use corporal punishment. That's what I'm talking about is just basic harsh punishment of children. I mean, it's not different than the verbal kind of stuff you talked about. If you look at Americans, 74% of, somewhere between 64 and 74% of Americans think, agree with this statement. Sometimes a good hard spanking is sometimes necessary to discipline a child. Um, and somewhere between 25 and 36% disagree with that. That has not changed that much over time. Frankly, you'd think it gets better, and it does eek uh, very slowly toward getting better from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the thousands, and now we're in the, in the 210s. So but 30% of parents still hit babies under one. 28% of parents will use an implement to do so. Uh, and spanking for, in, for many kids, and this is, these are American figures, by the way. This is not in Romania. Um, not picking on Romania, by the way, but we talked about it earlier. <laughs> oh, you're Romanian. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is not in New Mexico. You know, that's where I'm from. I can say anything I want. The uh, um, spanking continues for 13 years in, in a third uh, of those children. And, and parents will usually punish children for either hitting or stealing or what they consider to be um, antisocial behavior. And you all remember, I'm sure that you watch uh, The Simpsons as avidly as I do and learn pretty much everything you know about human nature from The Simpsons. Uh, and, and you know, so there's that one word where Bart is being chased by Homer and Homer is screaming, I will make you good. And, and so they, parents use it for that reason. But if you look at the overall, if you do a meta-analysis on all the studies that have ever been done, 27 out of 27 said that punishment was associated with more future aggression rather than less. Um, 12 out of 13 said it was higher associated with the delinquency um, than, it, than it was with the, the improvement of delinquency. And spanking of a kid when he's between three and five um, causes problems when they're nine, with, such as more aggression more rule breaking, um, more defiance of adults, and even things that are cognitive, uh, like lower, lower scores on, their, on vocabulary. Obviously, corporal punishment does not make children you know, cognitively inadequate. What it does is it stresses them out. And as we said before, when you don't have a somatosensory basis uh, to support higher levels of function, whether those are cognitive uh, or empathic or whatever. When you don't have that, you don't get the full range of intellectual capacity. Parents will punish their children because they think it instills social values, respect for authority. We all know, we all know what, what we hear. Uh, but 12 out of 12 studies, and these are all meta-analyses largely done by Elizabeth Gershoff, but this, they've been done by 
and repeated by a number of people. 12 out of 12 associated corporal punishment with poor mental health measures, things like anxiety, uh, depression, substance abuse, uh, and general maladjustment. Um, they hope, parents do, that is, that um, it'll inculcate strong family values, um, but 13 out of 13 studies indicated that it, it deteriorates the quality of the relationship uh, between parent and child. And I know I'm, this is, this, if there's anything that's the choir, it's probably here. But I'm saying there is so much data, um, and, and, I all th and I think all of us should basically have in our back pocket data on a, on a three by five card to talk about this. It's a tough thing to talk about. And, you know, in, in rank order, starting with three, finances, sex, and then how you parent your children are the most sensitive of all topics. So beware. Uh, and yet, and yet it's, it's, um, it's related to abuse. If we think about the avalanche of abuse, three quarters of abuse cases, and these are, these are substantiated abuse cases, um, start with an intent to teach the kids something or to teach them a lesson or to punish them for something bad they did. Three quarters, and kids who were physically abused or who were physically punished were seven times more likely to be also abused too. It's a direct link between punishing kids physically um, and abusing them. And child abuse rate are four, not, four to nine times higher. I won't go over all the figures. Um, except that the punishment that we see where we think that's discipline and that's abuse doesn't exist. There is no, it's a, it's, a fi, it's a gradation is what it is. And so you get small effects in terms of delinquency, aggression, uh, substance abuse, anxiety, depression. You get those same effects you get from the other adverse experiences with corporal punishment. You just get them to a much lesser degree. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's done with love. It doesn't matter if it's done with charity. Um, it, uh, it causes later um, social, emotional problems. They're small, um, but they count. And, and it's what gives the society social permission, I think, um, to, to hit kids in other kinds of ways.